At the outset, uh, Tanisha, I'd like to sympathise with our colleagues in Westminster and indeed to the people of London who have experienced yet another horrific attack by Islamic extremists. And as we know, it's almost a year to the day since we had another attack in Brussels where 32 people lost their lives. And on behalf of uh, the Fianna Fáil party, my party leader and my colleagues, I'd like to express our condolences to the families of the four people who lost their lives yesterday and indeed to wish all the other people who were um, injured as part of that incident a speedy recovery. Um, Tanisha, the issue which I wish to raise with you here this morning is one of job creation. Um, you will be well aware of the Succeed in Ireland initiative, which was a concept which grew out of the uh, recent Global Irish Economic Forum. And it's a job creation idea and plan which was sponsored by uh, your government, which was managed by the IDA and contracted to uh, an organisation called Connect Ireland to run the initiative. And I think it's fair to say by any measure this initiative can be considered an outstanding success when you consider that around uh, the globe there is now in excess of 80,000 members of the Irish diaspora who are connected to this programme in, one, in over 147 uh, countries. We have seen 81 companies now locate in this country as a result of the initiative creating over 2,000 uh, jobs with a yield to the Exchequer in excess of €300 million. Uh, euros over the life of the programme and an estimated uh, yield to our GDP of 1.8 billion. And in addition to this, Tarnisha, it is very, very important that you know, appreciate and understand that Connect Ireland is a not-for-profit company. They, they get paid for job creation on a no-fall, no-fee basis and for every job they create it costs €4,000, whereas an equivalent uh, job which the IDA creates costs in the region of €11,000, so you can see the value for money. And significantly also, Tarnisha, they have gone a long way towards addressing the urban-rural issue we have in terms of how the government and the IDA haven't been pushing enough of jobs into rural Ireland um, because of the concentration of jobs which have been coming into the greater Dublin area. On Tuesday, Tarnisha, of this week, the um, Eroctus Jobs and Enterprise Committee met with Connect Ireland and officials from the Department of Enterprise. And it was a very unsatisfactory meeting because the IDA and Enterprise Ireland failed to show. And I think it's fair to say that there was cross-party support and unanimity that the work of Connect Ireland has been extremely successful. They have been proven to bring jobs into Ireland and into rural Ireland in particular. And now we are at a point where on the 26th of March, which is this Sunday coming, the contract is due to expire. Now, the contract was extended by a year to allow for a review, and that review has not got underway. We have had complete inertia from the Government you, and Deputy. from the Department in terms of establishing this review. So the question is, and the point is, there has been a lot of momentum built up, there has been a lot of leads uh, generated, there has been a lot of contacts uh, generated, and there is a lot of uh, potential jobs now in the pipeline as a result of the Succeed in Ireland initiative, as a result of the work of Connect Ireland. And it's coming to a shuddering halt on Thank Sunday you, next. So what we are asking, Tarnish, is can the government see common sense? Can you step in here and extend the contract, as there was a precedent uh, where the contract was extended previously for a year, extend it for the period and the duration of the review, which is about to get underway, you, and we don't have the terms of reference. So can we have some common sense government from government to extend this, Tarnishta, please. Tarnishta. Uh, thank you, Ken uh, Corla. Um, thank you, Deputy, and I want to join with you as this is the first opportunity we've had here in the Dáil uh, to respond to the dreadful events in central London and outside Westminster Parliament uh, yesterday. I know that every member of this House will join with me uh, in expressing our outrage at this cowardly and evil act. Uh, against innocent and defenceless people in London yesterday. And I think we, like all right-thinking people, utterly condemn and reject uh, such awful actions. And our thoughts and sympathies are, of course, uh, with the families and friends of those who have lost their lives. And, of course, amongst them, PC Keith Palmer, who gave his life uh, on duty in Westminster uh, yesterday. And we also think of the many men, women and children who have been injured, and we hope for their speedy recovery. I can confirm that there is a, an Irish citizen amongst the injured, 
uh, but uh, I am advised that that person's injuries are uh, not considered life-threatening uh, and that the embassy, the Irish embassy in London and of course the Department of Foreign Affairs uh, will offer all assistance to that person and to the family. I just want to say that I have obviously conveyed my sympathy and offered our full support to the Home Secretary, Amber Rudd, and I spoke with the British Ambassador uh, this morning uh, to express our sense of solidarity and our shock at uh, these awful events because, of course, you know, the ties that bind us across the Irish Sea are very close and strong and we feel very keenly that same sense of shock and horror that uh, our colleagues and families and friends uh, in Britain uh, feel. Uh, it has been treated as a terrorist attack and uh, it has the hallmarks, as you said, of other attacks in Brussels and Paris. And whatever the motivation, quite clearly, there can never be any justification for this type of inhumanity. I have been briefed by the Guardi uh, authorities. I have spoken with the Commissioner uh, this morning, and they are in constant contact with their UK uh, counterparts uh, directly and through their liaison person there. I do want to say, Count Corla, that uh, Ireland cannot consider itself immune uh, from the threat posed by international terrorism and extremism. And the expert advice is that while an attack is possible here, it is unlikely. And all possible steps are being taken uh, to deal uh, with any threat to this country uh, by Ungarda Shikona and supported by the Defence Forces uh, where uh, necessary. And they will continue to work very closely with the UK and international uh, colleagues uh, to make sure that uh, we remain uh, safe. I conclude on this point by saying there are a small number of people here uh, whose activities are a cause uh, for concern uh, in terms of supporting terrorism and they will continue to be monitored very closely uh, by the authorities. But today is really about expressing our, our sympathy uh, to all who have been affected by this appalling outrage uh, in London. In relation to the points that you've raised, Deputy, about the uh, Connect Ireland and Succeed in Ireland, there was a detailed discussion here on that uh, in the Dáil yesterday. Uh, Minister Mary Mitchell O'Connor made very clear uh, the points uh, uh, where we're at in relation to that. Um, it was born out of the Global uh, uh, Irish Economic Forum and rightly with the aim of involving our global diaspora. And of course, the context that should be put behind this is the fact that job creation has been so successful in this country. Uh, a strong uh, policy of, has brought us to a point where our unemployment has reduced down to 6% from 15. Um, in relation uh, to your point about uh, extending the contract, Minister O'Connor made it clear yesterday um, that it is legally not permissible on account of public uh, procurement law to extend the contract. It's already been extended by one year. Um, and if the programme is to continue, the IDA would need to put it out to tender once more. And the board did consider the future of the uh, programme at its meeting in November. And the board made the decision, however, not to retender at this time. But that doesn't mean that a definitive decision has been taken in respect of the initiative's long-term future. Deputy Collins. Thanks. Um, I think it's very important that um, you appreciate that we're going to lose a lot of uh, momentum and a lot of initiative which has been built up if the uh, contract comes to an end on the 26th of March. And that will be very, very regrettable because there is a lot of potential jobs in the pipeline. Now, it was mentioned yesterday here and incorrectly the Taoiseach uh, said that there was uh, litigation pending and that the matter was sub judice. That is not the case. And I, I think simply we, we have to appreciate that what Connect Ireland are saying, extend the contract for the duration of the review and they will be happy to take their chances when the initiative or the contract is then advertised for retendering. But allowing uh, all the good work to fall uh, just simply doesn't make sense uh, to, to me and to, to my party. And in relation to the legal advice which you're quoting, Connect Ireland have their own legal advice 
from Arthur Cox. Now, bear in mind that Arthur Cox are one of the, the, the biggest uh, legal advisors in the country, and indeed the government and the state uh, rely on Arthur Cox. And they have said, uh, if I can quote, uh, please, Count Corla, we cannot agree that there should be any public procurement concern in extending the contract, and in particular, there is most certainly, in our view, no legal impediment that would prevent an extension of the contract to allow Connect Ireland to generate new leads and approvals for companies to establish in Ireland pending the departmental review of the initiative and the resulting decision on whether uh, to, or not to extend the contract. Yeah. And just to conclude, uh, they say um, that it is both legally permissible and entirely appropriate in the circumstances and we cannot identify any legal impediment <coughs> why the IDA are refusing to All do right. so. Thank you, so what I'm appealing to you, Tanisha, is this. Can the government not see common sense and allow this initiative and this programme to continue uh, whilst the review gets underway? Bearing in mind it still hasn't got underway. The, the department is dragging its heels uh, in, in a very, very bad fashion in terms of getting this up and running. We don't have the terms of reference for the review. We just have drift and Thank inertia, you, and we will lose the momentum. So I think common sense should prevail, Tanisha. Thank Tarnished you. Th well, I would say to you, Deputy, that no government has been as committed to job creation as this government. And you can see the, the fruits uh, of that uh, motivation and of that work uh, in the numbers of jobs that have been created. And uh, that is spreading across the country and also by sector. Uh, and of course, we will do everything possible to ensure that it continues. That has been a driving force behind the work of the last government, indeed, and of this government, and incredibly important. Uh, to the people of this country, uh, because that's what people want to see, an opportunity to work. Uh, the Minister will be answering questions at half twelve in relation to this, and I want to make the point uh, that she has made it very clear that there are legal issues involved and that there is no choice but to go out to public procurement at this stage. But she has also said that she will do a review of the, uh, the overall situation, uh, which I think is important, because she wants to look at the initiative, she wants to look at uh, the aspects of it uh, that have been successful, and develop uh, uh, more information on how it has worked and how it could be improved in the future. And she uh, is uh, currently setting uh, the guidelines for that review. But there are those uh, current legal issues, the legal dispute between Connect Ireland uh, and IDA Ireland, which is regrettable, no question of that. Uh, but she has outlined uh, a way forward, and it does have to go out to tender at this point. Thank you very much.